Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be trying to fix up this little Whitcomb switcher. I was uh, sent this little uh, die-cast switcher from a family called uh, the Barnharts, and uh, anyway, they sent this switcher and they said that it didn't run. I remember after testing it, I think it had a problem with the gearbox, but in any case, we're going to take this whole thing apart today and see if we can pinpoint and solve the problem. This is sort of a cool little engine. It'd really be nice if we could get this thing working again. I have one that's sort of uh, similar to it from Penline. I'm not entirely sure uh, who this one's by, but uh, in any case, we'll try to get it going again. As always, let's get this little thing set up on the track and uh, give it some power. And just as before, you can hear the uh, motor revving up, but uh, the engine's not moving. So uh, yeah, we can pretty much tell that this thing uh, has some sort of a problem with the gearbox. So we'll try to figure out whatever that is. Since I've never uh, opened up a switcher of this sort, I'm really not sure what to uh, expect on the inside here, but uh, you never know. Hopefully it won't be uh, too complicated to uh, work on. We'll begin by removing these two screws located on the bottom. I believe these uh, mount it to the uh, shell, so if we remove these, the whole thing should pop out, and then we'll be able to have a better look at uh, all of the inner workings of this particular locomotive. <laughs> Well, uh, those are our wheels. Uh, hmm. I think that might just be a motor mounting screw. Uh, these ones off to the side kind of look suspect though, so maybe if we remove these it will uh, allow us access to uh, in there. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I think we've figured out what our problem is. You can see right here, um, there's uh, this bit of band. Uh, this is this, uh, like a little belt basically which connected the motor to that so that broke at some point which is why uh, this is not running so we can probably replace that with an elastic um, but I would like to have a look at the motor because uh, just to make sure the brushes aren't too dirty or anything like that because that could be a problem as well okay there we are and uh, yeah, we can see on the inside here, we just got uh, kind of like a standard sort of five pole motor. That doesn't look too bad. We'll remove the rest of this uh, band, which is pretty much dry rotted. Look at that, it's breaking right off. Um, but yeah, other than that, things are not looking too bad. We'll remove both these clips and uh, that will allow us to actually uh, remove the brushes and just have a quick look at the commutator. And uh, I'm not sure how well you can see that. It is a little bit dirty, but this is far from the worst I've seen. Uh, the spaces need cleaning, though. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but they're not great. So we'll just take our little uh, carbon fiber pencil here, and uh, we'll clean up the uh, commutator a little bit. As I was saying, this really is not that bad on the inside here, but uh, I'm more concerned with really uh, cleaning the spaces in between the plates on the commutator because that's where trouble can lie. So uh, we got that all cleaned up and now we're just gonna turn it over and have a look to see. Uh, this is really where trouble can uh, form because uh, these areas between the plates need to be kept clean because what can happen over time is little bits of the brushes can end up between these plates and they can actually uh, short the motor which causes high current draw and uh, if you're not careful it can actually uh, destroy the commutator which in turn pretty much trashes the motor so you want to really look out for this because this can be a big source of problem and uh, well I mean you can see right here look at uh, look at that I would not you don't want that in your commutator it could just be the uh, type of brush but uh, my guess would be that this engine actually never had that much mileage put on it because uh, this is really not that worn down you can see it's almost completely flat it's not even entirely seated really um, so yeah that's uh, something sort of interesting but in any case we're going to uh, try to get that back in there usually if you just sort of gently uh, wiggle it in at the right angle this will yeah, go right back in just like you want it and just be gentle really when you're working on these things always uh, use brute force as a last resort and I stretch that a lot best to pretty much avoid using brute force for most things on these uh, little engines but yeah there we are all, all looks pretty good and while we're in here we'll put some oil in uh, these older engines are great they actually have these little uh, pieces of fabric which would uh, hold oil in for the bearings so you can actually put a fair amount of oil on these and it will uh, keep it there for quite a long time into that second bearing might be a little bit uh, trickier i'm just gonna use a different lubricant because it's got a longer 
And I can all just put a little bit right down there. This mover's um, not a bad design though. It's kind of hard to see, but there's actually a small plate between that bearing and the commutator, which prevents oil from getting on the commutator. So they thought this one through. Really good work. And heck, while we're in here, we'll open this up too and just make sure uh, everything's nice and clean. If you can disassemble something and have a, a good look, you know, why not? It'll probably make this thing run uh, a little bit better. This doesn't look bad though. Look at all this brass work. Really quite nice. And now the whole thing will just kind of come apart. Let me see, that's something you don't want in your motor or gearbox, I should say. Yeah, this is all in all right shape. I mean, I'll lubricate the bearings and whatnot, but this is this is quite all right here. And so we'll just kind of plant the wheels, making sure that the uh, teeth of the gears are going the same way. This is important for this particular kind, and I. I don't need much, a bit too much on, on that one right there. Actually, uh, yeah, it should be all right though. Anyway, we're going to uh, flip this around. Or better yet, we'll take this plate and we'll just put this back on here. Have it hold on to that. Slide these two pieces back together. And we just need to screw all this down and it should be all right. I would suggest for uh, older engines with metal gears is that you put uh, a uh, good amount of grease over oil. I mean, oil is good too, but the thing is, is that uh, metal parts on metal parts, uh, there's just a bit more friction there than plastic on plastic. So uh, it's really important that you put a thick enough uh, lubricant, otherwise uh, you're gonna have uh, a lot of wear on the gears. And <laughs> I can even feel it uh, with my fingers here. This just loosened right up from adding that lubricant. There's a lot of friction on worm gears, so these, uh, really need to be uh, looked after. Probably the most important part to uh, lubricate, I would say, on any locomotive. So yeah, anyway, uh, that whole thing seems to be uh, turning pretty well. So now we just need to get a band or something like that, and hopefully we can put this back together, and hopefully it will all run. So we're gonna try uh, putting this all back together. I went and got this uh, little O-ring here. You can buy these at the dollar store for pretty cheap, a great big pack of them. I think it's flexible enough that it will work, but it's uh, got enough stick in the rubber that it should uh, go around here pretty snug and it's obviously pretty strong. Um, I think this is a better option than just using an elastic. I just feel like this is just a little bit too flexible and uh, won't ultimately work all that well. So we're gonna try this. It may not work, might be a bit too tight, but you never know. Uh, anyway, we're gonna try putting this thing back together and uh, see how it all goes. It's really nice that, uh, in this case, though, look how well that fits around there. Nice deep groove there, it's perfect for it. So we're just gonna kind of uh, try to uh, feed this over that and bring the whole motor down in there, like so. There we go, and then I guess these just both wrap around the wheel. I don't know, this is a really kind of odd uh, electrical system here. I'm not entirely sure I, I like this part of it that much. I think I prefer uh, bearings. Well, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. Let's try uh, putting our screws back in here and see if she'll go. I mean, it's contacting the wheel on either side, but yeah, I don't know. This looks a little rough. But anyway, let's try testing it. All right, set up on the track. Oh, that was weird. Well, I looked it all over and I think I figured out what was wrong with it. It turned out that uh, I'd actually put one of the wheel sets backwards. It doesn't matter that the gears are a certain way because the worm gears are actually just regular worm gears, so it doesn't matter that the gears have a little bit of an angle to them. Uh, but in any case, that's what was causing the short circuit. So now if we put it on the track, it 
theory this should go. Everybody cross your fingers here. <laughs> that current's going on. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, we've got a runner. Look at that. Okay, um, so it's going, which is a success. That's way too high. I'm actually gonna stop that before uh, we end up burning out the motor. Um, I don't know why the current draw is so high. Could be that that band is just too tight and it's adding strain, but... Yeah, like it's doing a decent speed, but a motor with that much current is really... Like, this thing, this thing should be drawing like a, a quarter of an amp. That's like pretty much three quarters of an amp. So it's definitely still gonna need some more work, but hey, we got it running, so I'd call that a success. Anyway, I wanna thank you all so much for watching.